trouble with him in the later rounds. I don't think Tony Wilson is going to knock him out as he suggested. You just don't knock Mercer out, but he can win a decision. What we do have here at Casino Magic, however, is not one main event, but two main events. And the other main event, about which we have not yet spoken, is a good one as well. It's in the cruiserweight division between two undefeated fighters. John Ruiz, a near Olympian against Sergei Kovacev, combined 29-0 with 21 knockouts. This promises to be a very entertaining event as well. One of them will fall. Let's get to it now with the ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Michael? Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Casino Magic here in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, where tonight, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated, in association with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser, proud to be your bud, presents professional boxing for your entertainment. All these bouts are sanctioned by the Mississippi State Athletic Commission. Chairman, Mr. Billy Lyons. Let's get things started, ladies and gentlemen, with a 10-round bout in the cruiserweight division. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action will be your referee, Freddie Steinwinder. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with red trim, weighing in at 195 and one half pounds. He comes to us from St. Petersburg, Russia, undefeated with a record of 15 and 0, 12 by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, Sergey Kobosev. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with red letters, weighing in at 195 and one half pounds. Also from Boston, Massachusetts. He's also undefeated. His record, 14 and 0 with nine KOs. Introducing John, the Quiet Man, Ruiz. Hey, no, 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 no. no. Look, you both received the instruction of the dressing room. I want a clean fight. Any questions? Any questions? Touch gloves. Come out, fight. So here's a look at Sergey Kobosev, 15 and 0, not fought quite the caliber of competition that John Ruiz has, and admittedly, this is a step up for him. He has 12 knockouts, and meanwhile, the man in the other corner, John Ruiz, uh, looks upon this really as his stepping stone to the big time. In fact, both these fighters do. They have a common goal in this fight, and that is to take that next and quantum leap. And you know, the honesty that we got from uh, both fighters and their corner people was refreshing today, especially Teddy Atlas, who admitted that Kobasev has not faced spectacular opposition yet, but that this was his litmus test. Yeah, Kobasev is not a kid. He's 29 years old. And for that reason, they feel they can move him along a little bit quicker. He also had a long amateur career as the Russian national light heavyweight champion. I mentioned the rules. There is a three knockdown rule. There is a standing eight count here in the state. Saving by the bell uh, only in the last round. I and the, talk. the referee can stop the fight. That referee is Fred Steinwinder. We probably should talk about, we talked about Kobazev's amateur career. Uh, Ruiz had a distinguished amateur career as well. Yes, he did. And uh, he, uh, he made it in the Olympic trials to the uh, quarterfinals where he, or semifinals actually, where he lost to Jeremy Williams, a guy that we've seen a lot of here in top rank boxing, when Williams was a light heavyweight. And in a match in which many, many people felt Ruiz might have won. It's interesting too, the road each has chosen. Jeremy Williams didn't mess with the cruiserweight division at all. He went directly to the heavyweight division, whereas Ruiz is being brought along with the thought of, let's be the cruiserweight champion and springboard from there, very much as Evander Holyfield did. And it's especially appropriate for Ruiz because he's not a huge puncher. Williams, they felt, had the kind of punch that would allow him to be a heavyweight, and to some degree that's been true. So I think the jury is still out on whether Jeremy can take the shots of a big heavyweight. The jab of Ruiz is very important, and they told us today from uh, Kobazev's corner that uh, he would try and take the jab of Ruiz away by jabbing him, and that's what you do. You beat a jabber by out-jabbing him. Never, ever, ever was there a better example of it than when Kenny Norton fought Muhammad Ali all those times. He gave Ali trouble because he was, along with Jimmy Young, he was the only guy that consistently out-jabbed Ali. on 
Kovacev to get him away from the European straight-up style, and he appears to have done that pretty well. He yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, he's trying to implement a different style here. To some degree, it's working. Although in this fight, Ruiz is keeping him at bay very well with that jab. Either man is a huge knockout puncher. Both men have some power. So we head for the end of round one, largely a feeling out round, but you have the feeling that Ruiz uh, did a little bit more. We start the second round. Good first round for Ruiz, and uh, Kovacev just didn't do very much in the first round, and that's largely due to the fact that Ruiz had his jab in his face for the most part. And speaking of them, their jabs, yeah, that's exactly what Teddy Atlas did not want to see in this uh, first round, the trainer of Kovacev. The big edge for Ruiz. Now, you know, one telltale sign about these guys, we talked about the people they fight. In the very first fight that John Ruiz had, which we, we televised here on ESPN, he beat Kevin Parker over four. Well, the very, the, the third to the last fight that Kobazev had was a six-round win over Kevin Parker, in which he had some trouble. So that shows you the level of development of these two fighters. Kobazev is trying to put himself in position to throw the left hook, but he's not throwing. Okay, with a straight right hand that got there. And there's a cut over the left eye of Kobazev, and it's not in a good place. No, and I, it may have come from a punch, uh, a, a right hand from Ruiz. There's no indication it came from a... a Flashing heads. And as Kovacev takes more chances, he is getting nailed with more counter shots from Ruiz. There's going to be some work to be done in Kovacev's corner. And there's a little bit of desperation in his style, too. It looks to be a pretty deep cut. We'll have a chance to look at it between rounds. And not in the best spot. Just on the right on the the, uh, the eyelid. You know, they they mentioned us about John Ruiz being a cool customer in the ring, and he had been that as an amateur, but it's even more so as a pro. He, he's just a very poised performer, don't you think? Yeah. In fact, I think he brings that in and out of the ring. Yeah, he. It's funny. We asked him a couple questions at the uh, weigh-in this morning. He really didn't want to answer them, and he was very polite about it, but very firm. No, I really, I haven't thought about that, and I don't think about it. Yeah, and he's a very honest young man. Yeah. Too. Which bears witness to his nickname, Quiet Man. That's right. Maybe he got it because of the John Wayne movie. Boy, that is an ugly cut. Very bad. Very bad cut. If there is desperation in. Kovacev style, it's probably well warranted. You know what, Ruiz is very careful. He is not using his head as a weapon, even though Kovacev is pulling it into him. A real urgency in Kovacev style now, and I think it's with good reason. A lot of work to do in the yeah, corner of Kovacev. Come on! Stick this kid, Johnny. Two rounds of... Two rounds of... Double and triple the jab up. Look at this Fred Steinwinder is in the middle there, too, taking a good long look at that eye. The cut couldn't be in a worse place, and it looked to worsen as the round went on. It happened early in the round. Now, generally speaking, most cut men will tell you it takes two or three rounds to stop a cut, and you can see that is a nasty cut. Teddy Atlas leaning in there. When you make a move, don't pull back out. You're hurting the left hook in the body towards the end of the round. All right? We expected him to start early and fast, right? Now it starts to be That's all a tough one, though. Yeah, just in a very, very bad place. And, unless they're all the right things, put a lot of pressure on it early, which is what you're supposed to do. I don't think he ever did stop the bleeding. No, I don't either. And uh, I think that's going to be a real problem. Yeah, he worked on that as well as you can work on a cut, and it, it didn't stop. Yeah, not enough time. And what he would probably be, be well advised just to get on his bike yeah. in this round. Just forget about this round. That's a very good point. There is Ruiz. Most of that... Right. Edge has come from from jabs. If Kovacev can survive this round and not have any more appreciable damage on the cut, 
then his corner has a chance. You know, one of the things that Kovacev has found here, though, is a counter right hand he's landed against Ruiz. That punch is getting there with a, a little bit of regularity. There it is. Well, Ruiz winning the first two rounds, and I don't think he could squabble with that. Now he's done the better work. You see Kobazev really trying to get that right hand in over the jab of Ruiz, but Ruiz has been accurate with his jab here now. There's the right again by Kobazev. That's got Ruiz backing up a little bit. Ruiz is dropping his hand a little bit after those jabs. See, look how low it goes after he lands the jab. He's walking in with his right hand uh, low. Good body shot by Kovacev. It's interesting that Kovacev is really doing everything contrary to what you would expect with the kind of cut that he has. Yeah. Well, you're right. I mean, you, your point was well taken. Get through the round. Now, it is bleeding a little, but it hasn't been bad. But then Ruiz hasn't really hit it with any real good right hand. Kovacev is lunging a little. I'm surprised Ruiz isn't landing better rights. It's also a little black and blue mark underneath that eye. There was a right hand. But still, the, the cut is not really opened up again. There's a headbutt. That's not going to help it. And there was a right hand. Ruiz is uh, is a little sloppy in this round. Now this was not ruled as a clash of heads. If it had been after three rounds, if they had to stop the bout, they would go to the scorecards. But in this instance, at least we have seen no indication right. that it was from a clash of heads. Ruiz is ducking in, and that really doesn't help his style. He he should be not ducking in, but staying at a range where he can throw the jab in a straight right hand. Well, and in fact, against the more savvy fighter, uh, he'd be sitting there for an uppercut. End of round number three, and Kovacev got through without any further damage. We start the fourth round, and Kovacev actually fought that round extremely well. He really did, even with that cut over the left eye, uh, he managed to get through without the cut really reopening. Les Bonanno had yet another minute to work on the cut. Right. Here are the jabs through three rounds, and Rua is, of course, living and dying on that jab. Kovacev went to a brawling style toward the end of the second round after he got cut. And landed some pretty good power shots in that round. What's happened to John Ruiz in the last round is he is letting his technique slip away. Instead of staying with the jab in a straight right hand and then moving to his left, he's ducking in, putting himself in a position where uh, Kovacev might land something. The counter right by Kovacev, that's what he's pinning his hopes on. That's the kind of straight right, though, that Ruiz wants to land. Ruiz with a solid jab, which is getting through. He could come with a right behind it. On a reminder, we're talking about co-made events tonight. The other half of the main event duo, Mercer versus Willis. We've talked about that fight. Willis has to think he has a real chance. Ray Mercer, of course, is a guy who is just fighting for respect right now more than anything else. And these two guys that uh, we mentioned that they would like to move into the upper echelon of the cruiserweight division, an echelon that in truth is pretty easy to move into. Next week we're going to see the guy who, um, truthfully, I think ultimately may be the boss of that division. That's Orlando Norris. He's moved down from heavyweight. He's 7-0, and uh, even though he's not a champion yet, somebody's going to have to prove to me they can beat him as a cruiserweight. The story of this fight has been the cut suffered by Kobazev in the second round, early in the second round. Even though on our card, we gave the last round to Kovacek. Yeah, this round, however, Ruiz has really come back to, to establish his style and land the jabs. See, but that brawling on the inside is not really what Ruiz wants to do. That helps Kovacek. And for Sergey, he's got to make the most of that when he gets in the middle. Both these fighters pretty well conditioned. I, I can't imagine 
fatigue being too much of a factor here. And yet, Kobazev looks like he's laboring a little bit with some of his punches. Very wide punches. Yes. Terrible, terrible, terrible technique by Kobazev. I now, mean, awful. And now the cut has opened up again, too. There's the compound his problems. There's a left hand from Ruiz. There, Kobazev got some leverage on his punches for the first time. Coming to the end of the fourth round, and Ruiz again starting to take control of things. We'll be back. Now, a momentary uh, lapse while we waited for the mouthpiece of Sergei Kobazev. Again, the work to be done in the corner of Kovacev on the left eye. Let's talk about the power punches in this fight. Kovacev, as we said, has kind of tried to at least turn this into a brawl after he got cut. And there's an important thing to remember about that is some of those Ruiz's jabs, Ruiz jabs, are actually stronger punches than the power punches of Kovacev because a lot of them were delivered in not a perfect manner. Well, they thought this morning that Ruiz's speed would be the difference, and to, to a great extent, that's true. Another thing about you look at these guys' record and Ruiz 14 and 0 with nine knockouts and Kovacs have 12 knockouts in his 15 straight wins, but neither one of these guys is a big puncher, and that will show more and more as the caliber of competition that they fight has stepped up. You know, when they look at these tapes, no matter who wins, neither trainer is going to be completely happy. I can tell you that right now, because Ruiz's people will not be happy about the fact that he's laying in with Kobazev as much as he is. And certainly Teddy Atlas, when he looks at Kobazev, won't feel, unless something dramatic happens, that he um, fought his fight as well as he might. That could change, of course, but that's the way it looks right now to me. Kovacev. He's starting to throw pretty good combinations. He's throwing his right hand a little straight. Look how he squares up, though, when he goes in. Now, I know that they feel like Ruiz should take advantage of that with a counter right hand. He's really not doing it. Yeah, they were talking about a punch that he has, too, called an angle jab, which really is nothing more than a jab thrown from someplace other than directly in front yeah, of your opponent. And he's not doing that either. No. There was the jab that we talked about. I think you're right, though. I think Kovacev is uh, running on about a half a tank here. What he's doing in this round, though, is making his kind of fight. Whether he can continue, I don't know. But And Ruiz is pretty much falling in with that. He's letting Kovacev walk in, throw the body shot. One punch that Kovacev does get leverage on him, and Barry, I don't know why this is true, but many boxers will throw a left hook to the body and get great leverage on it and throw it to the head and not, and that's what Kovacev does. Maybe they have to bend the knees more. That's, well, that's probably the reason. Hey, you look, you just figured that out. Unbelievable, huh? 13 years, I didn't figure it out. You walk right in here and figure it out. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> End of round number five, and again, uh, Kovacev's just going to have to find something that so far has not been there with any consistency. We'll be back. Jefferson City, Missouri, as you can see the work being done in the corner of Sergei Kovacev, and you can also see a little mark under his right eye. It's not a cut, it's just like a welt. And Les Bonanno has done a spectacular job in closing that cut. Yes. Look at the numbers through the first five rounds, and Ruiz, you can see, with a higher connect percentage and more connects too, and that is due in large part to the fact that Kovacev has tried to brawl him, and Ruiz has been the classic boxer. Plus, he throws crisper, more accurate punches. Yeah, he's and especially with the jab, that punch. And it's been, oh, now that's what they want from Ruiz. They wanted to come with that right hand very strong after the jab, but he still leaned in after he threw it, Barry, and I don't think they want that. He's got that habit of leaning in like that, and that's not going to help his style, because that's it, not going to help him. If you're going to do that, you better be inside banging left hooks to the body and the head, and that is not what Ruiz does. Now, the other thing that Teddy Atlas was telling us about Kovacev is even if he loses, it's not an embarrassing loss because he is stepping up in competition. And they feel that if he loses and loses close, he's still going to get plenty of fights. Yeah, and, and a lot of that has to do with the division they're in, the cruiserweights, it's true, because there are lots of matchups out there 
And there are, it's not a division that is rich with phenomenal talent. There's some good fighters. Bobby Chezes, Al Cole, you mentioned Norlin Norris, Anna Clay Wamba, uh, you know. Pretty crisp right hand from Ruiz. Looping right hand, going to right hand lead now is Ruiz, three times in a row. Kovacev holding on a little bit. Ruiz doing a good job of covering up on the inside, but there's no reason for him to be there. He's getting hit with some punches, but those are very much arm punches by Kovacev. But you know what, Ruiz is slowing down a little bit, isn't he? Yeah, he is, and he's been going backward a little bit, too. And this has been a, turning into a pretty good round for Kovacev, and I gave him the last round. See, Ruiz continuing to go backwards. And always sticking his head in and laying in. He may be a little tired. Yeah, I think you have a point there. Or to put it another way, correct, oh, great one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not on TV anywhere. Somebody has no, to do it. I saw Pally was this last week. Frank Layden from Utah Jazz. Yeah. He's at the CBA draft at the Imperial Palace. Great event in, in Las Vegas. Great event. <laughs> oh, it was fun. <laughs> Frank was fun. Frank! He's always fun. Frank! So we come to the end of round number six, and this is a pretty close round, actually. It could be a pivotal round in this fight. We'll be back. John Ruiz doing what they want with the right hand, but leaning in. Look at how he ends up with his head in a position where, as you aptly pointed out, Barry, with a different fighter could be hit by an uppercut. In the sixth round, uh, a slight edge to Ruiz, but Kovacev really was the stronger and threw more punches. Well, he landed 16 to 8, uh, had a 16 to 8 edge in power punches. It's a tough boy. You know, I gave the last round to Kovacev, and uh, this is one of those bouts where I'm not going to tell anybody to go to bank on my scoring. That's the nice right hand by Ruiz. But when he leaned in, he gave Kovacev a chance to land the shot against him. I know I'm sounding like a broken record on this, but it's just not appropriate for John Ruiz. And, it's helping Kobazev and giving him a chance to stay right in this fight. Well, it has been an entertaining fight so far. Remember, we're going 10 rounds. Neither of these men has gone past eight rounds before, and in fact, each has only gone eight rounds on one other occasion. So we're going to get into uncharted waters pretty soon. A little repair on the glove of John Ruiz. Not again. Yeah, that's right. We saw this eight times last week in our wow. main event. That was that was amazing. You know, here's the interesting thing. It's it's a lot more humid down here, but it was humid in Las Vegas. The story of the fight was this cut over the left eye of Kovacev. It happened in the second round, and it really looked for a time as though that was going to threaten the outcome. However, good work in the corner. As you see, uh, Al Score has it even after six rounds. I'll tell you that your point is very well taken. I think this is one of those fights that could be uh, wildly diverse so far as the judges are concerned. Yeah, and, and you can't, you wouldn't be able to argue with it too much, really. I tell you, Les Bonanno should get uh, a lot of credit here because he has done a great job in uh, keeping Kobazev in the fight. But if, in fact, it is that close, then this could come down to who's in better shape. And Kopasev is really going to the body now. He's done that in the last three or four rounds. Well, in the last round, there were times when Ruiz looked as though he might be getting just a little bit tired. I don't mean to say that he's gone, but he took a few more deep breaths. Good hook by Ruiz. That's the best hook I've seen him throw ever. Franked it inside. Hey, this is the quintessential round in this fight. Scoring it is tough because Ruiz has landed a lot of sharp punches, but Kovacev has forced the action and made the fight on his terms, even though he isn't always effective at it. Oh, Good right hand wow. there from Ruiz. Ruiz has been effective with a right hand lead. And, and why he's not using it more, especially after, and even after the jab, I don't know. Clash of heads right there. Ruiz ducked in as Kovacev charged at him. Oh, I did it. No damage, however. 
into the corner of John Ruiz we go. Norm Stone, Robert Cadino. All right, time. I'll get it, I'll get it, Bobby. Take your time, take your time. John, pop the jab, baby, pop the jab. Look, he's fucking dead tired. You want all pieces? I got the all pieces, yes I do. So the right hand that John Ruiz landed, a good counter right. Nice short right hand. Didn't land perfectly on the jaw, but it did land well. That's a punch that's underused by Ruiz, in my opinion. Not been countering as well with the right as he hey, might, hey, and not on, using it after the jab. And in that oh, round, look at Kobazev, 28 to 11 in power shots. But that's I, the story of the fight, really. Yeah, and I, I ironically ended up giving it to that man, Ruiz, the strength of... Uh, just, I thought, a lot of the jabs he landed were going right to start off the, the round. He starts off this round by throwing a few jabs. In the seventh round, very close. Ruiz again with a high percentage, but remember, Kovacev is just looking to load up more. And as you said, is forcing the fight. And if, in fact, ring generalship, that vague term that we use in judging fights, uh, does come into play, then you have to think about Kovacic. Yeah, he, he's throwing a lot more punches as well. Look how the right hand is there for a reason. You take a step to his right and really set down and crank that right hey, hand. I'm right. confident he could land uh, a lot more of them. Had a couple of headbutts too, one at the end of the last round and one just a moment ago, and you right. can see why. Right. Kovacic comes ducking in, and so does Ruiz. And your card now, a point for Ruiz. Yeah, it's, uh, and, and again, I would hasten to point out that if you see the judges' scorecards and they differ a lot from that, it's not, it wouldn't be shocking. He's only 21 years of age, and that's important to really remember with him. That's why it's different for these two boxers. Koba's a really does need at least a good performance here and to some extent he's he's gotten it although i don't know if this is the the kind of performance that will tell them yes we definitely have a potential cruiserweight champion here because he is facing a 21 year old who has about as much experience as him even though he, he might have fought better people well and the other thing that strikes me is this may be in its own way a little bit bigger version of a guy like uh, ricky meyer say yeah his style is really not conducive to his power yeah, very good. That's, a, that's really a good analogy because he doesn't bring the kind of power that would help him make this style work. And even when executed perfectly, and on occasion we saw Ricky Myers executed perfectly and it didn't quite get it done for him. A reminder, of course, our, our co-main event, Ray Mercer and Tony Willis. Ten rounds in the heavyweight division still to come. Got a lot of boxing to come here from Bay St. Louis. Eighth round, a very tough one to score. We're going to have a special guest in Ringside Report. Oscar De La Hoya is going to join us live. He's fighting here on Saturday night. And on the same card, Roy Jones. So we've got a co-main event here, co-main event Saturday night as well. And we're going to be seeing Oscar De La Hoya on a special ESPN event coming up later this fall. So we come to the eighth end of the eighth round, and again, this is a fight that's going to be extremely difficult to judge. We'll be back with more from Casino Magic after this. Of getting him down there, he should have been countered by Ruiz, but he wasn't, and he was able to land the left hook on him. It was a very good replay because it showed Ruiz not throwing the counter right hand that he should have thrown. So we come to the ninth round, and you really have the feeling that this fight uh, could still be had by either man. The numbers are not really consistent with how the fight has been. No, it's a very close fight, and Ruiz has landed 145 jabs of his punches, um, and 30. And uh, while Kovacev has only landed 34 jabs, Kovacev has landed 134 power punches, and uh, Ruiz has landed 71 power punches. So clearly, you know what? The way I read that, it made absolutely no sense. But the bottom line is Ruiz. Landing a lot more jabs, Kovacs have a lot more power. The really frightening thing is I understood. You. <laughs> no, that's you and four viewers. But <laughs> bottom line is more power punches for Kovacs have more jabs for a week. That's the point. Kovacs have had another good left hand off a break a moment ago.
Kovacev has dictated the pace of the fight, and I think that's really, if anything favors Kovacev, that would be it. Yeah, that's exactly it, because, and, and he's, uh, Ruiz is allowing him now to do this. Not a lot landing, but some getting in, and Kovacev, I mean, you know, in truth, this young man has made a real earnest effort here and gotten himself in shape, but you know what? He's a bricklayer. I mean, he's a guy, that, and Teddy Atlas is a marvelous trainer, and, and let's say that right up, up top. And he has obviously gotten him to do things that he didn't do before, but he's a very plodding kind of a fighter. And Ruiz ha presumably has the speed and the um, boxing skills to deal with that, but has not always done it tonight. No, and I, I don't think Ruiz has much in the, in the way of legs left. Now, that was a good right hand by Ruiz. I think you're right, Barry. And those rights didn't do much to Kopazov. Good, another good counter right by Ruiz. I think John Ruiz, and this is just a just a guess, I think the moment got to him a little bit. He started off boxing very well, and I think somewhere something made him a little tight in this fight. Well, uh, how about this? Just as a suggestion, the cut came early. And when something like that yeah. happens, and it did look like a nasty cut when it first happened. You might have thought the fight was going to end. Yeah, almost a tendency just to say, uh, well, I got him now. You know, I don't think you consciously say that, but I think somewhere inside of you, something says that. And then you can never get it back together again. Yeah, I, I think it's a very good point. Well, we're going to have our second uh, tape stoppage. Well, maybe not. The round will end before we do. Good straight right hand, actually, from Kovacev in the middle of all that. And the end of the round, and we are spared the timeout to fix the glove. In the corner of Ruiz. Not after I get done. One more big one, Johnny. You won that round big. Big, Johnny. I gotta take his gloves. Когда стоишь, прямо не двигаешься, попадаешь где прямой. Двигайся свинком, джеб, джеб. Прямо и после этого левой боковой. Well, Teddy Atlas wants the right hand from Kovacev, but it was Ruiz that landed some good rights. And uh, there were a series of them in the last round by Ruiz, which probably got him the round. Well, I learned one thing, that the word for jab in Russian is jab. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like kind of like in amateur boxing. Isn't it amazing? In all languages, break means break. Yeah, or stop. Stop. Means stop. Yeah. Look at the numbers in the ninth round. And actually, now there's less disparagement in the ninth round than there has been in a lot of the others. The story has been pretty much the same, though. Kobazev, generally speaking, has thrown more power punches. Ruiz has thrown more jabs. In the last round, though, Ruiz did set down and land some pretty good right hands. It also amazes me when amateur referees from the United States ref in the international competition. They don't say stop, they say stop. I know, they stop. speak with an accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like there's always a tendency when you're not being understood in one language, you speak louder. That's right, yeah. You know, the, the, the interesting thing about this bout, and the, well, another tape stoppage, is that neither man has really, I don't think, accomplished exactly what they wanted to do in this bout. Neither man has been dismal, but they haven't quite gotten it done the way they wanted to, no matter who wins. That's low blows and holding on the It's so interesting. I mean, we have had a couple of weeks in a row. An inordinate amount. Yeah. In fact, Jack Fisk in the San Francisco Chronicle wrote a piece about last week's fight. Really? Talking about how they really have to go to, to uh, Gaffer's tape. And I guess what Jack didn't notice is that they were using Gaffer's yeah. tape. And it still happened. Uh, the very... The, uh, yeah, and it was provided for them by uh, by our guys at ringside. Right. Let's go. And the thing about it that makes it not just a humorous comment is when you have that many stoppages, it can affect the flow of a bout. So you really don't want that. Kovacev, really an arm puncher. Boy, that really hurts him in terms of his overall effectiveness. Ruiz, you know, John Ruiz, I'm sure he's going to look back at this tape and look at the innumerable opportunities he had to land counter right hands and wasn't able to get it done. 
Yeah, that's not very pretty right now. No, it, it's truthfully, I mean, a lot of a lot of that has been the case throughout the fight, but because it's been an earnest effort on the part of these two guys, it hasn't been quite as dreary as it almost was. Yeah, I think that's true, and I think both corners, both handlers, that is, told us how they feel that a victory here would move them into the next echelon, and in all candor, I don't think either one of them no. is ready for the next echelon. Def definitely not. I'm not sure either one of them is ready for each other. <laughs> Well, for Ruiz, it's not such bad news because he's 21 years old. For Kopazev at 29, though, it probably is worse news. But you know what? This is the kind of performance that gets you a title shot. So That's true. So champion's looking at this and saying, hmm. He can't beat me. Yeah. And again, for Ruiz, this is an excellent learning experience whether he wins or not. Hey! Let's go. Step back. Let's go. So one round to go. That's the, that is the end of the fight, I beg your pardon, I'm sorry. I got so taken with it that I thought <laughs> this was the ninth round as well as the last we round. Once, we once had a, 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 a box off round when there was a draw That's right. on covering boxing. That's right. But a reminder, baseball continuing here on ESPN. Well, it's going to be an interesting decision, I think. Yeah, I think Ruiz won it by a point or two, but uh, it will be, I, I think it will be close, and there may well be some diverse scoring, as you pointed out. Th that man, uh, Leslie Bonato, in back of uh, Teddy Atlas, really kept Kobazim in the fight because that, that cut in the second round looked just off. Yes, it did. And, and I still think, to a certain extent, it changed the tenor of the fight because it made Kovacev brawl, thinking that it might be over. It got a lot closer as the fight went on. Yeah, and when you look at that, a 50-some punch edge, that's about a two or three point, or maybe a two-point fight. But look at the power punches. Yeah. Now, what what, what prevents this from being so feeling so one-sided is many of Kovacev's power punches were arm punches, and many of Ruiz's jabs were real strong shots. Right. The same luck I heard before. Yeah. So we await. The verdict here, and Michael Buffer's ready. Let's get up to him. Here's Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Elmo Adolf scores about 97 to 95. He has it for John Ruiz. Freddie Sullenwinder scores about 96 94 for Sergei Kobosev. And Marco Cosino scores about 98. 94 for the winner by split decision, Sergei wow. Kobosev. 98-94 for Kobosev? Uh -huh. Pretty big edge. I'm sorry. Pretty that's big edge. I mean, he made a good effort, but that's not right. So Kobosev is the winner of split decision, and we told you about the variance in scoring. You saw it. Let's take a look now at some fights that happened this week.